to appreciate just how much these homes have changed, I'm going to show you my favourite ugliest to loveliest transformations. The layout of their bungalow is fairly typical. On the ground floor, there's a dining room at the back that's been extended at some point. A decent-sized bedroom, a bathroom, kitchen with lean-to extension, and that living room at the front. Upstairs, the one dormer houses a staircase and the second bathroom. But the two bedrooms at either end are formed within the original roof line, dramatically cutting off the headroom. Carl intends to strip the building back to its original footprint. He'll then open up the ground floor to create an adaptable space, giving a living room at the front, wet room and office come bedroom in the middle, and a full-width kitchen and diner at the back, all of which can be shut off again with sliding doors. Upstairs, adding three new dormers will give the headroom to create the extra bedrooms that the family need. And clad in weathering steel, they'll give the house the distinctive look that Darren's after. To create more impact and screen the bungalow from passers-by, Carl is planning to put up a trellis at the front and back that follows the outline of the building. From the tiny entrance hall, a set of stairs leads up to an open-plan kitchen, dining and living room. Off this is Nick and Sonia's master bedroom. And to the rear, the only bathroom and a compact guest room. Abby and Andrew's big plan is to give Nick and Sonia an actual house by creating a ground floor, by stealing space from the garden and then closing the ugly first carport. They're intending to cover this new extension with black timber cladding. Inside, they're going to convert the carport into a kitchen, and the new L-shaped extension will include a downstairs toilet, utility, and an open-plan dining living room, with bifold doors out to their garden, providing the connection to the outdoors they've been lacking. The whole space will be lit by circular skylights and the flat roof. Upstairs, they'll reconfigure their existing floor plan to create an extra bedroom, study area, and an ensuite for Nick and Sonia's master bedroom, which will also benefit from a much larger dormer window. Inside is a lesson in bad design. On the ground floor, a third of the footprint is taken up by the ugly garage. There's a porky office for Martine, an oversized hallway, and a small master bedroom with a disproportionately large ensuite. Upstairs is even worse. The front door opens onto a landing dominated by a staircase and a staggering seven different doorways leading to Noah's bedroom, a bathroom, small guest bedroom, cupboards, and a very isolated kitchen. The only generous space is the dining living room, which at least makes the most of its southerly aspect. Greg's big design solution to transform the shabby and impractical rear elevation is a slick, refined, almost floating steel and glass terrace, connecting the first floor with the garden, accessed through new French doors. Internally, Greg's plan is simple yet equally transformative. On the first floor, he'll take down as many walls as possible to create a large, open-plan, loft-style space with a kitchen, diner and living room, as well as a study for more time. He'll open up the smaller windows to let in more light. On the ground floor, the big idea is to convert the garage into one of two new bedrooms, the second replacing Martine's existing office. The corridor becomes part of a family bathroom and utility room, with a new doorway allowing side access away from the front of the property. The master bedroom remains where it is, but will be redecorated with new storage created from the oversized ensuite. Downstairs has a relatively generous footprint. Leading off the boxy entrance hall is a large L-shaped living room and diner, with a study can playroom at the back. But the pint-sized relic of a 60s kitchen really lets the side down. Running the full depth of the house is a garage originally designed to park one car in front of another. Upstairs, space is even more squeezed with the roof pitch reducing the usable floor space considerably. The master bedroom is pretty generous, but at the cost of the two other bedrooms. A large dormer above the bathrooms breaks the line of the roof, 
but it's the only way to accommodate more headroom. Graham's first big idea is to tear down the garage and replace it with a two-storey extension which will mimic the iconic shape of the existing house, but will be rotated 90 degrees to maximise the footprint. Secondly, he wants to unite old and new by cladding the entire house from the roof to the walls in one single material. The ground floor of the new extension will house a much smaller garage, a cloakroom and utility, leading onto a kitchen diner with bifold glass doors out onto the garden. The original boxy hallway will be turned into a study for Steve, and to create more space, the stairs will be rotated by 180 degrees, while the rest of the downstairs will be given over to living space for the grown-ups and a snug come playroom for the kids. Upstairs, the new extension will house two new bedrooms. In the original house, one of the bedrooms will become a bathroom because Graham's final big idea is to turn the dormer bathroom into a stunning glass corridor, linking the old with the new and create a striking entrance.